if I was strong, then nobody would look after me. That actually is the main reason why I have lost as much weight as I have. Aggressively journaling. <laughs> like guys, like, how do you feel? What's going on? So I continued to struggle that year. And bearing in mind, I'm still in medical school while all this is going my on. My channel, Alexandra here. Um, if you're new to my channel, I am documenting and sharing my weight loss journey. But to be fair, more specifically, it's my health journey because I also talk about my mental and my physical health. And I'm also a full-time medical student. So I am very, very interested and passionate about the science behind um, nutrition and movement. So I'm also sharing that on my channel. So if you like the sound of that, stick around, subscribe, join the family. <laughs> so in today's video, um, we are talking about where the heck I've been because it's been 15 months and <laughs> I'm actually telling myself off here. So not, not you guys, it's me. <laughs> I'm the problem. Um, but yeah, I'm going to tell, give you guys an insight into where I've been for the 15 months and obviously the fact that I've lost a little, a little bit more weight since I was last on here. So yeah, let's get into it. So where have you been? Well, first of all, your girl got some new piercings. <laughs> I got two new piercings. So there are now 10 on one ear and 11 on another. And before you say anything, I, I do want some more. And then I also got two new tattoos when I was in Asia with my best friend and my sister. And one of them is for myself and my dad. It's, it's, it's two giraffes. Which the symbol is that um, he's kind of always looking ahead and looking after me, which he always did. So I really love that. He hated tattoos, by the way. So I, I know he wouldn't agree, but it's for me. It's not about you, dad. <laughs> it's about me. But yeah, but yeah, got those. I love them. Um, but yeah, let's talk about why I had to ghost for 15 months. Um, so guys, before we get into this video, I am going to discuss weight loss, I'm going to discuss grief, and I'm going to discuss depression. So if any of those things are a trigger, um, please take that with caution. So if you can't watch this video, um, then please take care of yourself first. So let's get into it. The 15 months that I took off was definitely unintentional, but I realised that juggling all these different things in my life was becoming very, very difficult for me. But I couldn't, I kind of couldn't understand why, because I've got the kind of personality where when I put my mind onto something, I can just get it done. Like the struggle isn't the consistency or the drive or the discipline. So when I started to struggle with those things, I was kind of perplexed. I was just like, why am I struggling to do things? And you know, I'm the kind of person that I started to like just berate myself. Like, why can't you get this done? What's wrong with you? And I didn't really understand what was going on. And it wasn't until I went to my my favorite cousin in the world. <laughs> I love all my other cousins, but she's basically my sister, my twin, my everything. So I went to her wedding um, last year. Yes, I went to her wedding last year. And um, I'm the kind of person like around family, or like, you know, around family that you enjoy the company of on occasions, weddings, everything like that. I am basically like peak level happiness. And I'm going to the wedding of one of my favorite human beings on earth. And I could tell whilst I was there, like, I'm not happy. I really don't know what's going on, but there is every kind of stimulus right now to be making me extremely happy, but I am still very, very down. And there are times where I'm just happy, I'm smiling, I'm enjoying the moment. And then sometimes within the moment or when I'm alone in the hotel room or something, I'd get really down. And my kind of down manifests as either my mood is very, very low or I'm not motivated to do anything. Like, I, I just can't physically make myself do anything. So I was kind of perplexed as to what was going on. Obviously, the first thing I did was I spoke to my family, I spoke to my friends and I started to reflect I'm, I'm quite a reflective person, especially post losing my dad. I've become much, much more reflective because it helps me kind of sort through my emotions. And to be honest, the wedding was what made me realize that I was probably depressed, but it was the year leading up to that. Well, I was already very low, but I just didn't understand why. And then I then realized that, oh, 
you're still very much grieving your dad. And I think the reason why that was a bit, was it was a realization I didn't have for a while is because I thought because he'd already passed and it'd been at, at that point it was now three years it's four now I thought oh, it's been so long this is my new normal anyway my new normal is I'll kind of be a little bit sad for the rest of my life so things won't make me as happy anymore so you know I don't love it but my dad's gone so it is what it is isn't it this is life now I basically didn't think it was possible to get even sadder after it had been a long time since losing my dad. I just thought that the level of sadness I was in would sort of basically stay at that level and there was no more like depth that it could drop to. But that was what was newly manifesting in me that, oh, I can get even more sad. I can lose even more motivation or love for my life and just kind of carry on existing so although i'd done the counseling sessions near the time when my dad had passed and about six months again after that i think i thought that was enough and that oh because this is my new normal i'll be okay i didn't realize that actually if you don't keep looking after yourself or checking in on yourself things can get worse and that is what i was experiencing so I continued to struggle that year and bearing in mind, I'm still in medical school while all of this is going on. And medical school definitely requires you to be dedicated consistently all the time. What I should have done was go to my medical school and probably ask for a year off or more. But I'm, I'm not that personality type at all. I am definitely a keep going, you can do this, you've got this. <laughs> when it's just like you're drowning and you're just like no you've got this you've got this and I I should have definitely have paused I should have taken time out and I should have just taken care of myself here first but that would have all have been logical things to do and I was not in a logical state of mind but being me rather than do the obvious thing or the logical thing I remember reading about the fact that if you are deficient in vitamin d it can lead to depression and um, I knew I was vitamin D deficient because of uh, previous blood tests I'd had so I basically started being very religious with making sure to take my vitamin D I know I was also anemic so I was also taking iron supplements and I definitely noticed that my mood would be lifted if I was consistently taking my um, vitamins and actually it was to the point where sometimes if I didn't take my vitamins I got a bit anxious because I was just like oh my gosh if I don't take my vitamins, I'm going to have a very low mood episode in about a week type of thing. And to be honest, I did experience things like that, but I'm not entirely sure if it was a placebo or if it was the vitamins. But I do know when I was taking my vitamins consistently, though, the low moods were not as frequent and they also wouldn't last as long. So anyway, I was I was still struggling a lot and um, I was doing my best with the vitamins. But um, as I've mentioned, medical school was just not going well at all. Like I was really, really struggling. And it was very difficult for me to struggle with something academically because I was very much the kind of student, especially when I did my GCSEs and my A-levels and that sort of thing where I knew if you work very, very hard, you just, you just do well. And it's that simple. And working very hard and doing very well aren't necessarily tied to your emotions when you're doing well you just need to put your emotions aside and just get the work done so because that was kind of my personality when i was then struggling in med school i wasn't necessarily thinking that well it's because you're depressed <laughs> because you're grieving your dad and you're not doing well you're not able to commit to anything you're doing but i wasn't thinking that way i was thinking that no no, no just put the emotions aside and, and get the work done so then i kept i was kind of like chasing my tail because I would go through like a few weeks where I was very motivated, I could get all my work done, and then three weeks of nothing. Like, I could not do anything. I could not pick up a single lecture, I couldn't go through my notes, I couldn't study. It, I was literally like, almost like, an absence of anything. So I, I would just be walking around my house, I wasn't doing anything. I, and I knew all these things had to be done, but absolutely nothing in me was motivating me to do it. So I didn't know how to help myself almost. So 
anyway that led to me not passing so I have to I mean I'm, I'm having to repeat the year but and and initially when I was faced with that reality it was I don't I think it was also kind of the shock I needed to my system because I for a long time I kept thinking that I can always just carry on that was my mindset. I can always just carry on. I can always just carry on. I can always just carry on. At the end of the day, I did the counseling when my dad passed. So I'm okay now. The new normal isn't great, but it's okay. You can just carry on. You can just carry on. But I really feel like God shook me almost with that. Like you cannot go through medical school just scraping through because number one, what kind of doctor are you going to be if you kind of know an and a decent amount of the knowledge like you'll definitely know enough because obviously it <laughs> they're not going to graduate dodgy doctors <laughs> dodgy doctors they're not going to graduate you can't graduate to become a doctor if you're incompetent basically me personally i want to be excellent you know i want i want to be the kind of doctor that my patients can fully trust in my clinical judgment i can give them the best kind of care i also want to have pride in the kind of care i can deliver and for me, that takes someone who is very committed to what they are studying. So as scary as the situation was, it was exactly what needed to happen for me. It was exactly what needed to happen for me because in the last year, guys, the amount of work I have put into my mental health, the amount of support I've had from my family and friends, no word of a lie, guys, this has probably been the one of the happiest years i've ever had like bar none like even before my dad passed i i haven't and i think it's not because i wasn't happy before my dad passed but it was because i didn't value happiness the way i do now and that is because i and, and also i didn't think it was possible to be this happy again anyway but actually and it's not because, you know, I don't miss my dad every single day and I don't, the depth of the love I have for my dad has changed or anything. But it was very much rationalising to myself and understanding that nothing actually would make my dad happier than me being healthy again and me pursuing things I love. And that's something that made me happy and there's also an extra happiness with it that I, I know would make him happy. So I basically employed all the tools that I have been employing. I, I became much more prayerful. I was, I leaned into the support from my family. I leaned into the support from my friends. I was aggressively journaling. <laughs> like guys, like, how do you feel? What's going on? <laughs> like your girl was journaling like shout out to journaling I absolutely love it and then I think one of the biggest things though was the amount of walking I've been doing your girl has been hitting her steps like I have been stepping big stepper yeah <laughs> guys I have been walking and I mean I'm gonna obviously talk about the weight loss but I I, I think the main reason the walking I, I'm just at peace with myself when I'm on a walk because it's just my mind is clear. I am so happy. The sun is shining. Like even the sunsets are beautiful. Like I'm taking so much joy from walking that it, it gives me this mental peace and clarity that I'm, I'm more than sure it's my endorphins are probably through the roof from all the walking I'm doing. I have never ever walked this much in my life. So the benefits that I'm getting to my mental health is like nothing I've ever experienced before. So I was just like, I I cannot believe what they say is true. <laughs> I can't believe you can get all of this from walking. I mean, I, that that has really like given me a lot of peace. I'm not gonna lie, and I think that has been another main reason why my mood has been so lifted, and. It's just made me have an outlook that I'm kind of capable of so much now because to do something with that consistency again, which I haven't been able to do for so long and to be so committed to something that I haven't been able to do for so long, it just made me feel really, really good about myself. And it made, it revitalized my passion for med school too, because now like I can study for days and days and days. I can really be committed when I'm studying and 
I love science anyway. Like I love the human body. I, I love physiology in particular in terms of how the body works. And so the interest of my medical school degree, that was never the issue. It was just being motivated to even look at my lectures and learn because of how I was feeling. But I feel like because I've kind of restored those things, studying has just become something I enjoy again, you know? So that actually is the main reason why I have lost as much weight as I have. There was two main reasons why I've lost the weight that I've lost. The first is I fixed my mental health. When I say fix my mental health, I mean, I, I manage it and I, I manage it well now. I manage it well by making sure I'm walking. I'm managing it well by making sure I'm checking in with family and friends and I'm managing it well by being prayerful. I'm managing it well by journaling. All those different tools that I have at my disposal have, have allowed me to get my mental health very healthy, like the healthiest it's been for so long. And because of the health of my mental, I'm the kind of, <laughs> the health of my mental. <laughs> It means that when I then commit to the different things I have to with my weight loss, I'm able to do it quite effortlessly. So when it means, okay, make sure you're not eating processed food, I'm doing that. Make sure you're going on your walks, I'm doing that. Make sure you're doing your swimming, I'm doing that. So essentially it means that the different parts of weight loss that you have to fit together, I'm able to do those things and I'm able to do it consistently. And my struggle before was because I was not okay and not well, I would know what to do, but I wouldn't get it done. And the consistency has been the biggest difference. That and um, the science that I learned and I understood about nutrition and, and movement, which I'll talk much, much more in, a, in its own dedicated video, um, where I actually go into the details of you know, how I've actually lost this 117 pounds. But um, for the purpose of this video in terms of a life update, the reason why I've been able to lose as much weight I've, as I've lost and be consistent was predominantly because I fixed my mental health. When I fixed my mental health, guys, with me anyway, when I'm healthy in my mind, I, I kind of feel unstoppable. I feel like I can do anything all the time because I, I can stick to it. And, and really and truly achieving anything is through consistency. So once you decide, oh, I want to do this thing, well, what are the, what are the steps you need to be able to achieve these things? And if you can stick to those steps, you will achieve that thing. And, you know, and that's just in its simplest form. You know, I, mean, I know there's barriers to things and all these other things that can get in the way. But um, in terms of what you can purely do from your point of view, um, once, you, once you have a roadmap and you're healthy in your mind, you can follow that roadmap. And that's what I've been able to do. And yeah, so, and that's what I continue to do. And that's why I'm just like the happiest I've ever been. Guys, I, I'm just like, I'm so happy. I'm so blessed. Like my family and friends, <laughs> I've got so many incredible people around me and I feel like invigorated and also, I feel like I've reclaimed my strength and for a long time, I let go of my strength because I felt like without my dad, I felt like I wasn't strong anymore. Or, and I also felt like I didn't want to be strong because if I was strong, then nobody would look after me. Nobody would support me. But actually, my strength was probably my favorite thing about myself because when I was strong, I could do things for myself and giving up my strength because of the pain I was in and because of like you know there's this whole trope of you know black women must be strong blah blah blah, blah. and I sort of kind of rejected it because I was just like well if I'm strong who's going to help me who's going to support me and as the eldest daughter in an African household you very much feel the pressure of having to be that third parent and so when I was at my weakest I felt like my strength is the reason why I'm not getting any help. So I don't want to be strong anymore. But through this year of healing, I would say, I was just, I realized actually that my strength is my, my superpower almost. And also I realized that 
being strong and part of that strength for me was knowing that I literally have an army of people who love me that will support me no matter what and that is also my strength my strength is not just within me and what I'm capable of but it's also the people I have around me and the circle and the community that I have and when I realized that I I literally almost grabbed my strength back to me because I was just like oh I'm so happy to have you back because you are why I can do things you know and just having that support having that love for my community and for myself just made me feel like yeah uh, I can do anything so yeah uh, that's it that's been the last year and a half and I am so happy to be back and I can't wait to share much more about the science of nutrition and movement, my vlogs, the lifestyle, and obviously actually get into specifically how I lost this weight. But yeah, thanks so much guys for watching and see you in my next video.